Good morning, and welcome to our Sunday morning service here at Hurricane Baptist Church. Uh, this is the Sunday before Christmas, won't be long, those last few days are rolling around, and we're going to talk a little bit today about the coming Messiah, is what I have entitled it. It's a pretty common title for this type of message. We're going to be in Matthew chapter number one, and uh, as we look at the Christmas season, and we know that a lot of celebration goes on, and some of it's big, flamboyant, and really uh, real beautiful and all those things and others is more subdued in different parts of the world they celebrate in different ways but uh, Christians all around the world can't necessarily express their joy and, and peace so much because of the persecution uh, in Jesus day as we look at the conditions of the world in his day uh, the Romans were ruling the Jews uh, times were hard it was harsh they were you know we read a lot of these things about like Roman rule and different uh, kings and that but realize that this is not a uh, nice cakewalk. These people are suffering. Uh, these, these nations that are when they're ruling, they're oppressive. And uh, this nation of Israel right now, they're, they're looking for a deliverer. They're looking for the Messiah. Uh, they've read about it, you know, they have the Old Testament and uh, they've read all about the Messiah and what he's going to do. So we're going to look at some of these things, but the idea is that uh, there were different messiahs in that day and time. People would claim to be the Messiah and they would get people together and they'd raise up an army against uh, the Romans and pretty soon they'd get defeated. So they've, they've heard about Messiah coming, Messiah being there, but they had never seen this Messiah that, that the scripture had, uh, prophesied or foretold about. So I'm just going to give you a uh, just about four different items here that uh, the Messiah, when they look for the Messiah, uh, let's, as we look at uh, chapter 1, verse 18, let's get the first part of that. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ. Okay, Jesus, the Savior, the Messiah, is the Christ part of it. And so, uh, the Messiah is the, the Hebrew, Christ is the, the Greek uh, word there. And it says, what he's going to be, he would be a leader from David's line who would free the Jewish state and make it a great nation. So they remember the days of Solomon and David and when they were a great nation, a powerful nation, and a rich nation. And they longed to get back to that. And that's one of the things they think the Messiah is going to come. And that's what he's going to do for them. And they go another thing, that he would be a great military leader who would lead the Jewish armies to victory. So as they went against the Romans or whoever they had to go against, that he would be that military leader that could give them the victory again to, to restore the, the grandeur and the power and the the prestige, if you would, of the nation of Israel. The next thing, he would be a, a supernatural figure, straight from God, who would bring righteousness to the world. So they understand that the, the coming straight from God, they understand some of the supernatural, but they don't really understand everything that we're going to talk about here when we get to verse 21. They, this is what the Messiah was supposed to be like. And then the last thing, he would be the one to bring peace to the whole world. And we know the day's coming. Those things are all going to be full, fulfilled, but it's down the road. You know, we're going to go through the tribulation first. We get into the, the millennium. Then we see some of these uh, things coming to pass. So they have these great expectations. So as we look at this portion of Scripture today, we're going to be looking at, talking about Joseph here. And keep in mind that Joseph's just a carpenter. Uh, he's just an average guy out there. And as we look at this story unfold, keep in mind now, they're living it. We're, we're, it's a historical event to us. We're looking back and seeing how it all unfolded and, and the action and the reaction of different people. And, and we judge, yes, that was good or that wasn't good. But they're having to live it day by day. And some of these things that uh, we will read about here, some people express these, uh, experience these in life today. So let's go ahead and it says here, but the, the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. This is what happened when his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph. And, uh, you're probably familiar with it. It was a three-step process. Uh, they were betrothed uh, as young children. Maybe the uh, parents got together. Anyway, they were committed to one another that they would get married someday. And then the day comes that they have to accept or reject that. They did have that option a lot of times, and they could accept the, this person as their betrothed and, and go ahead and go into the espouse part of it which is like an engagement period would last about a year so she's in this uh, this engagement period right now she's espoused to joseph before they came together now or they had any relation sexual relationships she was found with child of the holy ghost now just understand what what he's saying there uh this unwed young girl is pregnant she's not married She's betrothed to Joseph. And so you can just look at Joseph's side of the picture now. Here, here's this, this, girl, this girl, this young woman he loves. 
he, he's going to marry her and looking to, you know, like anybody, you'd be looking to have your family, you know, your home and all those things that go with that. And all of a sudden he says, what, she's pregnant? How can she, she's been unfaithful. She's been messing around with somebody else, you know, and so uh, the, the hurt, the anger, maybe the frustration. So all these emotions come into play. Now, as, as Joseph is contemplating now, what's going to happen? Because uh, the law is, they're still under the law. And the law was that she should be stoned, stoned to death. So here's Joseph. He's facing this quandary now. And then Joseph, her husband, that's one she's espoused to, being a just or a righteous man and not willing to make her a public example. In other words, he didn't want everybody to know about it. You know, can you imagine the gossip and everything that was going on? But he didn't want everybody to know about it. It was minded to put her away privily. In other words, he says, maybe we can just kind of slide her out of the picture, I'll get a, a bill of divorcement, we'll, we'll get divorced, and it would have let her go her way. And uh, because he, he loved her, it was. A, he, but you can understand where he was coming from, how he, how he felt about this. Uh, again, these things are happening uh, as the day goes by, as the hours go by. We, we look at it and say, here's Joseph, yeah, he's a righteous man. God chose right, this righteous man to be the earthly father of his son. So Joseph now has to react in a certain way. And you can imagine, he'd like to say, you know, forget about it, throw his hands up and walk away from it. But he didn't do that. We're going to see a little bit more here. So we go to the verse number 20. And we see here it says, but, but while he thought on these things, as he, he pondered it, he just didn't make an instantaneous decision, hey, this is it, I'm out of here. But he, he's pondering this, he's uh, thinking on it. Uh, Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream. Saying, Joseph, uh, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. So we see when he, he talks to him there, he says, thou son of David. Now, Joseph knew, just like everybody else, that the Messiah was going to come out of the line of David. And here he is, this angel is telling him that you're of the line of David. So he knows that he's under this, that this line, this uh, of the Messiah and uh, they knew who he was and they knew the power of the throne of David and so he, he said this is what you're gonna be he said don't be afraid to take Mary to your wife the, the things that you think about her uh, that she's been unfaithful she's been untrue she's uh, had relationships with another man he says uh, don't don't be caught up with that. that that's not true for which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost now, again, here's Joseph. He's just found out, or he just not too long before, he's found out his girlfriend, his future wife, is pregnant. He's never been with her. He has this dream, and this dream, this angel appears to him and says, "Don't be worried about it. Her pregnancy is from the Holy Ghost." So now comes the time to to believe or not to believe, to trust or not to trust. And so Joseph has to make a decision, and we have to make decisions. God speaks to us, uh, not necessarily in a dream by an angel, but as we go through life, there's times that we have to make decisions. And we have to make those decisions based upon our walk with the Lord and, and how much we trust the Lord. So we know this, this scripture that come to is coming to pass, and he says, this is what's going to happen now, Joseph. And don't get all upset now, but uh, go ahead and take her for your wife, and, and she's going to bring forth a son. You don't have to worry about it. It's going to be a girl or boy. She's going to bring forth a son. And now shall call his name Jesus, which means Savior. She's going to have the boy. He's going to be called Savior. For he shall save his people from their sins. There's a whole lot in that, that verse. Says she's going to give birth to a son. They have the sonograms and all those things. But the, the angel's time. This is what's going to happen. And this is what he, this is his purpose. You're going you're gonna to call his name Jesus because he'll be a savior. He's going to be the savior of his people from their sins. Remember what we talked about as the Messiah. The, the Messiah is going to come and he's going to do all this for us. And they, now he says here that he's going to come, he's going to save them from their sins. Well, they're, they're thinking over here about the Messiah and all the power and, and all those things. And he said he's come to save them from their sins. You know, the expectation that we have of our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ 
uh, can be uh, tainted or, or twisted to fit the worldview. Uh, we, I, we hear uh, preachers and teachers get up and say, you know what, God wants you to be happy. He wants you to be happy. And that's why God's going to do for you what, what you need done so you can be happy. Well, if I understand the scripture right, when I read about happy, and it's, I looked it up in the concordance in the, in the New Testament, there's six times the word happy is used as it's spelled H-A-P-P-Y. Uh, we know that as we read it in the, the Beatitudes, blessed means happy. But when I look at being happy in, con in the context of scripture, it's we're being happy because maybe we're being persecuted. Uh, maybe we're suffering for Christ. Uh, these, it's not happy that everything in my life is great. It's happy that I'm going through something to bring glory to God. That I'm being used by God and being lifted up by God. So when we think about being that God just wants you to be happy, uh, we don't. it's not in the context of Scripture that we feel it today. To be healthy and wealthy. God wants everybody to be healthy and wealthy. Well, we know that's not true because we see a little, there's, there's sickness, there, there's death, there's, there's people that are in poverty that are, are very spiritual, and there's people that are wealthy that are spiritual. See, but we can't expect God just to, to meet our standards. And the world gives us these ideas that you deserve to be happy. You know, all of these things, you're worth it. And, and to build us up and build us up and get us maybe prideful. But we understand, keep in mind that what our, what our responsibility is as Christ is our Savior. Now, he's being born here in the, in the manger. We read all about the birth. But keep in mind uh, the purpose. And as we look at his life, and the purpose was his death. Yeah, that's the idea. He's going to do a lot of great things. We're going to know the teaching and the preaching and all the, the healings and all those miracles that he did. But, but that, that's not the point of That's just to show that he is who he says he is. Uh, the whole point of this, the whole point of the birth is to get to the death, the burial, and the resurrection. That's the whole point. And so when we read about this and we read about the Messiah and, and what the Jews were expecting from the Messiah, and that's why uh, so many times the apostles didn't understand Jesus would talk about his death, his burial, and his resurrection, and, and they kind of went over their head. They, they didn't comprehend it until at the end, when it was all over. Then they started understanding what he was talking about. Then it was revealed to them what he was trying to teach them. So when we read this, uh, this story about uh, Joseph here, and we see how he's reacting to the news, and so we understand that we can face disappointment, we can be discouraged and all those kind of things, but the idea is that we're going to be close to the Lord, we're going to be doing what he wants us to do. We need to, to react and do what he wants us to do. And that's what Joseph is going to do. That's what Mary did, and, and Zacharias, and, and Elizabeth, and as we look at, at the picture of this time of this birth, this celebration of Christmas. So we want to be sure that we understand that, that we, we're living day by day too. We don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. So we're faced with situations day by day. And so how we respond to those situations day by day determines how, how well our walk is with the Lord, how, how close to Him we are, how obedient we are to Him, how sensitive we are to Him. See, are, are you, in your life, are you looking for ways that you can bless God? Are you looking for ways that God can use you? In your current situation, in, in this time that we're living in right now with all the chaos and, and the, this virus, and a lot of people are getting sick and people are dying, you know, we don't know who's going to get sick and who's not going to get sick. We don't know who's going to make it through it and who's not going to make it through it. But as we go through this process of all this going on around us, it's how we face it. See, God had a plan for Joseph. And his plan was for him to be the earthly father of the Lord Jesus Christ. He had a plan for Mary. She was to give birth to the Messiah. And he has a plan for your life and my life. It might not be in, in the grandeur of what we're talking about here. But it's just, it's just as meaningful for eternity as we use our our. Uh, abilities, our talents, our gifts to lead people to Christ, to show that we, we walk true to the Word of God. That's what Joseph is doing. We've seen down there, excuse me, verse 19, that he's, he was righteous. I mean, he, that he walked right with God. He, he walked according to the law. He, he wasn't sinless. Mary wasn't sinless. But the, they were close to God. They, had, they were vessels that God looked at and He said, I can use these vessels. And back before the beginning of time, 
back before Genesis 1-1. This was already planned. It was already laid out. In fact, if you've read the first, uh, what is the first 17 verses of Matthew 1, you see the, the lineage you see from Abraham all the way down to Joseph. All those people that were involved, how God brought it all together and made it happen to get to this day. Uh, last week we talked about in Genesis or in Galatians 4:4 about in the fullness of time God sent His Son, born of a woman, and born under the law. And we see that this is the fullness of time here, and that's what was referred to in, in uh, Galatians 4:4. The idea that, that this is the time, and so these people need to respond in a way that will bring glory to God and will accomplish His will. And God is God knows that, and they're walking not by sight but they're walking by faith. They just believe God like you and I need to as we go through each day of our life. So we see here that so what he's going to do now, he's going to save his people from their sins. His people. See, not all people are God's people. Not all people are belong to Jesus Christ. I have over in John chapter 10 and verses 26 and 27, he says this, and Jesus is talking, and he says, but ye believe not because ye are not my sheep of my sheep. You're not part of my flock. As I said unto you, uh, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. The shepherd, uh, the sheep know the voice of the shepherd. The shepherd knows his sheep. And so when the shepherd leads the sheep that are his, they follow. And Jesus said, you're not all mine. Everybody out there is not a child of God. Everybody out there is not a child of God. Jesus came. He was sent for the Jews. We can read that over in the 15th chapter of Matthew as the Canaanite woman came to him and, and besought the healing for her daughter. And uh, he said, but you know, I, I came for the Jews. And the idea was he came to, as the Messiah for the Jews, that the Jews would be the people that would be the missionaries of the world. They would take the good news out to the whole world of putting faith and trust in Jesus Christ, but they failed. They rejected him. They crucified him. So therefore, then the, the church come into play. And that's the responsibility of the church is to take the message into the world now. Israel's still there. Israel's still his chosen people, but he's just set them aside for the time being. You can read about that over in, in uh, Romans uh, chapter 10, 9, 10, and 11. But we see here, he says, you're my people. He's right here. He came to save his people from their sins. How do I become a child of God, a, a, a person of God, one of his people? I put my faith and trust in what he did. And if you want a great Christmas present, listen, if you're not saved, if you're not saved today, I want you to hear this. Uh, you can have the greatest Christmas present you ever received. It won't cost your family nothing. It won't, it, they don't have to go out and shop. They don't have to go to, to Walmart or, or Amazon or any of that to find a gift for you. All you need to do is to repent. Turn from the world and turn and put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. This, this babe that we're celebrating here uh, this time of year, his birth, and it'll be a few months down the road, now we're going to celebrate the other half of it, the end of his life. We have the beginning here, and then we'll go to the end and celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection. See, that, that's the greatest gift. The greatest gift you can have, the, but the gift of God is eternal life to Jesus Christ our Lord. That's the great gift. So when we celebrate, we understand that that gift is there for everybody. It's just like when you get up on Christmas morning and the kids all run down the presents under the tree and, and uh, there's a gift for everyone. But if you don't go to the tree and take the gift, you never receive it. It's, it's wasted. It's there. And that's the way his salvation is. The salvation is available, but you have to receive it. You have to repent and put your faith and trust in Christ. Just believe God's what it amounts to. And that's what he says. If you trust my son, if you put your faith in that shed blood, you have eternal life. And that's what Jesus came. He came to save his people from their sins, uh, the power of sin. When we get saved, when we're born again, we're saved from the power of sin. Sin no more has, has dominion over us. Now, it's a struggle. It's, it's still there. But we're no longer a slave to sin. And some people become a slave to addictions and things like that, but we're no longer a slave to sin. Uh, from the bondage of sin, we're brought out of the slave market of sin. So we're redeemed. The guilt of sin, and most of all, the consequences of sin, 
a sin that I'm not talking about if I do something wrong and have to pay a price, go to jail or, or whatever as a consequence of my sin. I'm talking about eternal consequence, the condemnation of your sin, knowing that the, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ the Lord. You deserve death. And that's what consequences. If you reject Christ, the consequences of your rejection, the consequences of your sin is death. Separation from God forever. Not a physical death. We all do that. But the spiritual death. And Christ came and He, he was born in that manger. He, he lived those years on earth. Most people we think about 30, 33 to 33 and a half years. He started age 30 and about 33 and a half years that He walked this earth and did all the miracles and did all. Just a short period of time. You realize that His life has impacted the world for over 2,000 years. So we see what he's doing here. He said, I'm going to save my people from their sins, the consequences, the guilt, the power, the bondage. Then we go a little bit further. And he says, now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, so this is a fulfillment of prophecy. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted as God with us. So we read over in John 1, 1, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So we see here that, uh, John 1, 14, excuse me. And so we see here, this is fulfillment of, over in Isaiah chapter 7, I think it's verse 14. The idea that this was prophesied all those years ago. And that God brought it all to pass. The fulfillment of prophecy. And that's why, that's why you can believe God. When God makes a promise, you can believe Him because He will fulfill it. He has the ability to fulfill it. It's all laid out. He has already accomplished all of that. So when you receive the promise, you can believe it. You can trust Him. You can put your confidence in it. That prophecy is fulfilled. And then we go down to the verse um, 24. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife. So we see the obedience. You know, sometimes we don't know what God wants us to do. We, we're faced in a situation we don't know whether to, to, uh, to speak up or not to speak up, to go or not to go. And so it, Joseph had it revealed to him. So in obedience, he did that. And so you and I need to do that. It, it comes to the idea of submission, submitting to the will of God, allowing God to work in your heart and in your life in a way that will accomplish what he's wanting to accomplish in you. See, it's not for you, but it's in you and through you that he has a purpose, and he wants to be that tool. You know, if uh, in the springtime here, Lord willing, uh, we get ready to have a garden, I'll get the tool out of the shed there, I'll get my tiller out, and, and I'll use that till, that uh, tiller to till up the soil to prepare it for the, the seed. And so it has a purpose, that's its purpose, and you and I have a purpose. Joseph had a purpose. God had a purpose for him, he had a purpose for Mary, he had a purpose for his son. And his son was to save his people from their sins. And he had to do that by living a perfect life and dying on a cross and paying the price for our sins. So what are you going to do about it, though? That's the whole question. Are you going to be obedient like Joseph was? He, he was obedient. He got up and did what he was supposed to do. Verse 25 says, And knew her not until uh, she had brought forth her firstborn, and he called his name Jesus. It's like a, the angel had told him. See, the idea of being obedience. Listen, we need, to, we need to practice obedience. We need to put self out of the picture. I like that uh, prayer that Jesus gave to his disciples. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. We put up such a struggle. So this time of year, you know, the uh, people are talking about this is so hectic and, you know, with the pandemic and everything, we can't do this, we can't go there and all these things. And, but the, the reason for the season is the same. Whether you have the opportunity to give presents or you don't have the opportunity to give presents. If things are going great or things aren't going so great, the reason to celebrate is the same today as it was when we had those great feasts and all the celebrations in the years past. The reason is still there and it's the birth of our Savior. I understand we know that uh, he, this isn't necessarily his birthday. I know, I guess it was in uh, four, the fourth century. They determined December the 25th to be his birthday, but that's, that's irrelevant. We, this day is set aside to celebrate the birth of our Savior. 
And so how do we celebrate that? We need to celebrate in such a way, such a way that, that point people to Christ. We need to show them that, that our relationship with Him is such and our love for Him is such that we want to bring people to Him. And there, there's the joy and the peace. We talk about that a lot this time of year. Having joy and love and joy and peace, peace on earth, goodwill to man and all those kind of things we talk about. But that the peace that we really need is the peace that comes from knowing Him and having that relationship, the peace that we have, the love, the joy, and the peace part of the fruit of the Spirit of God. So when you come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you're indwelled by that Holy Spirit, and you have eternal life, and you truly then can celebrate this birth. You truly celebrate the birth because you're a child of God. You're part of the family. This is, this is the birth into your family that we're celebrating. Our Lord Jesus Christ, our, our brother in Christ, if you would. So as we just get into the, the holiday season, like I said, this is the, the 20th. This will be broadcast on the 20th of December. Uh, tomorrow they're talking about a, a alignment of certain planets. And you know, I hear people say, well, you know, that's, that's like the Star of Bethlehem. Well, that can't hardly be the Star of Bethlehem because I read that they said, somebody said that uh, if I don't see it on the 21st, it won't happen again for 800 years. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm not going to be around 800 years. The idea is that it's a, the Star of Bethlehem was a miracle. Remember, Wise men from the east, we, if we went on down to that second chapter in Matthew, we see the wise men, they saw it from the east. They traveled to Jerusalem, and then the star reappeared for them to go down into Bethlehem. Uh, that alignment of those planets, those three planets, I guess it is, that's just going to be for a short period of time. That's not for six months or a year. But they took the wise men to get from the time they saw it to Jerusalem. So just give God credit, it's a miracle. God is into the miracle business and He can put a star any place He wants to. He can make it as bright as He wants to. So but we, want to, we want to celebrate not the star, but the sun. We're thankful for Joseph and Mary for their willingness to be obedient. And we're thankful for the Father for sending the Son. So this time of year, be sure that you praise the Lord for what He's done for you. And if you're saved, we have so much to be thankful for. And if you're not, the opportunity is there, like I said earlier. The opportunity is there to put your faith and trust in Christ. You don't have to die in your sin and go to hell. You can die in glory and go to heaven. That's a promise from the Word of God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day and we thank you for this time and for this time of year. And Lord, I just pray you be with those that are watching and listening today, Lord, that you might just touch their hearts and lives. That those that don't know Christ, that this would be a time that they would turn, repent, and put their faith and trust in Jesus. We, many of them will celebrate the birthday of the Savior, but they'll never make an effort to know Him. They'll never let Him touch them. They'll, they'll push Him away and reject Him. We pray, Lord, that they would recognize the need this day to receive Jesus, to put, his, put their faith and trust in that shed blood as payment for their sin. And for those of us that are your children, we pray that we would be found faithful to live the kind of life that would bring glory to our Savior. They would honor him and bless him and, and uh, help lead others to Jesus. We thank you again for your love for us. We thank you for what you've done. And look into the days ahead to see what you're going to do. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.